information, data pruning, and full text search um, presentation. Next slide. This um, Vivid Special Interest Group, the NASIG, is brought to you by Chris Powers and Wendy Wheeler. Next slide. Our presenter today is Sriram. He's a developer for HP NA. Next slide. Housekeeping. I just want to let everyone know this is a live session and is being recorded. So if you want other people to see this information, um, the links will be provided after the webinar. The recording will be available to all members of Vivid. Um, and we will have Q&A um, at the end of the session. And, and in between, we'll be taking questions as well. So on the side panel, definitely put questions, and we'll get those answered for you. Next slide. Want to do a quick uh, review of the control panel. Um, you can see here the questions under the questions in chat. Just put the information in there, and that's what will go on. And other than that, I think that's the most important thing on that screen. Next slide. And we'll get into the content. Thank you, Swami. Um, thank, uh, thank you, Renee. Um, hi, guys. Uh, this is Sridham here. Um, so today we're going to talk about the data pruner and full text search. So we'll start with the data pruner task, and we'll spend most of the time there. Then we'll get into the full text search in the later part. So, data pruner task. So, with the patch four of nine zero and patch two of nine ten and nine twenty, uh, we had a couple of changes with the data pruner. We made the pruner to be more aggressive. Uh, we made the pruner to be more accurate. So, this discussion holds for these patches and above. That is, patch four of nine zero, patch two of nine ten, and nine twenty. What is just the main goal of the pruner task? It is twofold. The first one is to remove the obsolete data, which is in the database, because then you collect a lot of information from the devices, and it creates a lot of data for its own housekeeping also. So you want to remove the obsolete data from the database on the files on the local NES server. So there are some logs. Um, there are some files which we create temporarily. For example, when you do a TFTP from the, when the device is calling back the NA, to do a TFTP, it creates a log. So we want to delete, and there are some server logs, session logs. So we want to delete all these old files. This is a system task. That means only admin has the privilege to configure this. By default, it is scheduled once a week. So out of box, once a week we schedule it. And we have configuration settings on the uh, you know, admin settings server data pruning. And the important and most important thing is pruner, running pruner is must. It's a mandatory. So if you switch off the pruner, we'll talk about it, what issues we can get into. So this is very, very important. Running pruner is a mandatory. And if you're trying to enable full text search, especially with the when you did a migration from the uh, migration from the old versions of NA, it's very mandatory that to run the pruner before doing enabling the full text search. Okay, now we thought we said there are two main important functions. So the first one is uh, pruning files, and the second one is pruning data from the database. Now let's talk about quickly talk about the pruning files. So if you don't do this, your NA server space may run out because it's creating a lot of uh, uh, temporary files, a lot of log files. Uh, this could be for various reasons. This could be TFTP logs. This could be task logs, session logs. I, this could be a temporary diagramming files. And this could be the JBoss regular logs. So you want to run the pruner on each code, because it cleans the local NES server also, which is, uh, which is stored on the local NES server disk. So that's pretty much about the pruning files. Very simple. You just want to make sure that you run the pruner on every NA server. Uh, that means if you are on a HSRMM, horizontal scalability or a multi-master, make sure that pruner is running on both cores or on all the cores. Now let's get into the important one where I'm sure that there are a couple of questions 
couple of interesting discussions happened about the database pruning. So what I'll do is, even before getting into that, I'll quickly show you the configurations which we have. So this is my 911 box. And this would be the same for 90 patch 4, 910 patch 2, and 920. So under admin settings, I have the pruner settings. So we already talked about the log files. So what I'm saying here is to delete all the temporary log files on my local NE server, which are all within 30 days. So what it will do is when the pruner runs, it checks the last modified data of the file. And if it feels that, okay, it got modified 30 days back, it just deletes from the database. Sorry, deletes from the hard disk. So that is about the file. Now let's continue the other pruning. So we have a couple of other pruning that are done, like configurations. These are device configurations. Diagnostics. We do a lot of diagnostics. So it is about the diagnostics. So here what we are saying is delete all the configurations that are older than 365. Uh, that is at a very high level. We'll get into that what it means. Then similarly, we talked about log files. We talked about temporary log files. We talked about the temporary driver files also. Now the database pruning is for configuration, diagnostics, events, tasks. Session information is also stored in database. This is a session when user logs into the NA. And a couple of more. We'll get into each one and we'll try to understand what it means, what the feature means, and what we are pruning and how the retention is calculated. And some if, it, if it, any additional rules apply to that or not. Now let's start with the events pruner. So you know, right, and here we have lots of events generated. Let's go and check what are the events. So if you want to know what are the events that are generated, go to the search for events. And if you look at the summary, right, this has all possible events which NA is generating. So we are talking about these events. So when our user logs out, there is an the event. When the user logs in, there is an the event. I'm just picking a couple of things. Um, there are many. There are some distributed events for a distributed NA. When the device is reloaded. So there are many events that keeps generating. So what we are saying is, uh, this prunes the event information. And the condition is very simple. Now, if the pruner is running now, now minus retention. Anything that is older than now minus retention, we delete it. So very simple pruner here. And the default retention is 45 days. That means out of box, all the events older than 45 days will be deleted. And if they deleted, there won't be any way to recover them. Those are gone from the database. So they won't be available in the reporting. The next sub pruner is the task pruner. You know, right, we have multiple tasks. So we have diagnosis, snapshot, software deployment, couple of tasks, uh, discover task. So here, the condition, so again, if you want to know the tasks, what are the tasks we have? Obviously, you can go through the UI and you, you can check what are the different types of the tasks. And the other simple way is search for tasks and look for the task type. There you go. There's a task type. So you have all the possible tasks here. So the condition is again very simple. If the scheduled date is now minus retention, if it's less than now minus retention, and the retention is 365 days for the task, and the status. So we are not going to delete any task that is not in succeeded, failed, duplicate, skip, or warning. That means if you remember in the session one, we talked about a couple of task dates. If the task is pending, we don't want, so it could be pending. Like if you have a, a task that you configure to run every Wednesday for the next couple of years, that will be in pending. So we don't want to delete those. So we delete only the succeeded, failed, duplicate, skipped, and warning that are older than the now minus retention. So these are very two simple pronouns, so straightforward. Next, we'll get into the topology. So there is a diagnostic task I'll just go to the task also so it will be easy. So let's say I'll go and say new diagnostics. So we have something called topology data gathering task. So this task gathers the topology information. So you want to prune the topology objects. 
So again, a simple rule, anything from now minus retention, less than, anything less than from now minus retention will be deleted and default is 45 days. Again, a simple pronoun. The next one is the sessions pronoun. This is about the session related information. Uh, again, this is also simple. If the session ended is less than now minus retention, retention is 45 days, we just delete it. Next, jumping into the next uh, sub pronoun, the ACL, the control list. So whenever we do some tasks that are related to gathering configurations, we pass the configuration data and we gather the ACLs and the ACLs are stored separately in a different table. And we have a search that is available for that. We can go for search for ACLs so you can find out the ACL information. So this is the past information. We are not parsing, when you do a search, we are not parsing the config files. You pass the ACL information when the config is collected. Okay, but that's a different discussion. Uh, so what we do is, uh, again, this is simple if the modified date, the last change date, or the last collected date of ACL is now minus retention, is less than now minus retention, we delete. And default is 365 days. Again, a simple tuna here, and those are pretty straightforward. Okay, let's go. The next one is the diagnostic pronoun. If you go to the diagnostics again, um, there are a couple of diagnostics that are available. So more than 10. This is referring to these diagnostics and the information collected when you run any of these diagnostics. So here the condition is, if the collected date is less than now minus retention, and retention is 45 days, we delete it. But there is one additional rule. Suppose I have a device X and it has a diagnostic type, let's say, uh, let's figure it out, let's say device boot time. And it has only one diagnostic for the device X, which is device boot time, and that is taken some 60 days back. Though it falls into the first rule, but it won't be deleted because we have only one diagnostic for that device of that type. So will delete anything that is less than, plus it shouldn't be the latest one. If it's the latest one, we'll retain it. So that means we'll try to keep at least one diagnostic per device so that you'll have the last diagnostic information. That's about the diagnostics one, Bruno. The next one, uh, which is a very important one, is the configurations pronoun. I see a lot of questions and a lot of uh, uh, questions coming in this particular one. So this is the data that is gathered with snapshot task. So when I do a task with snapshot, uh, we gather configuration information. Uh, the configuration could be a text configuration. That's what we see in the, if you go to the, any particular device, let's say, open a device. So I'm referring to the config current configuration. So this is a text configuration which can, we can see it in text format. And sometimes the configuration collected could be in draw configuration also. Yeah. We won't display the raw configuration, but our drivers, they mine the raw configuration for a lot of important information. And it's very important and we store that. And there are some devices, for example, the F5s are a very good example. They support the configuration only in binary format. So we collect the binary format, but we can't display the binary format for you, right? So what we do is we parse the binary. The driver, any driver passes the binary, and it shows it in text configuration. But we store the binary configuration in the database because if we want to deploy that configuration back to the device, we don't want to get into the hassle of again converting the text into binary and just deploying it because we don't know the device specific rules to do that. We don't want to get into that. So what we do is we store the binary. When you want to deploy back, so we deploy the binary configuration back to the device. And there are a few more other types, um, but the main important things to note is we store the text configuration draw on the binary. And again, the types depend upon the device, the type of device you are talking to, and the drivers. Um, even though some device supports some configuration, we may not be using that because the driver is not going to use that because it doesn't need it. So it depends upon the driver and the device, what information we collect. So here the conditions are a little interesting. So the date, the gathered date, 
should be less than now minus retention and by default the retention is 1 AM. Besides that, it shouldn't be the current device configuration. That means when I go to this and I said current device, so if I see device change, configuration changes. So it has a lot of other configurations, but the top one which is highlighted is the current device configuration. So if the current device configuration is collected one year back, but still we don't want to remove it because that's the only configuration available for the device. That's the first rule. That's the second rule. And the third rule is if user has edited configurations, because I can go there, I can see this, I can edit this configuration and deploy, edit and deploy configuration. So whatever the user has edited, obviously you want to save it for your reference. So we don't we don't delete those. We keep all the edited configurations. And these are not related to the tasks which are active. When I say active, it could be pending, running, or waiting a prototype. So we don't want to delete those also. So we have four rules. The date, and it shouldn't be the current configuration. It shouldn't be the edited configuration. It's not related to any of the active tasks. That is about the configuration pruner. Okay. So I'll pause here for a second and uh, Stephanie, could you go for the poll number one, please? The question number one. And while we're doing the poll, um, do you want to take a few questions? Oh, perfect. Yep. Great. Can we set NA to exclude certain files, for example, .bin files from slash server slash et cetera, FTP, FTP, um, D root from being pruned? So FTP. So hey. So this gentleman is referring to the files pruning. Welcome to GoToWebinar, web events made easy. Files that are worse than that. And obviously when you're trying to engage HP, it would be nice if you can add the use case, why you want to exclude certain things, what you want to do with that. That would be nice. Yeah, the new enhancement request form includes that, so that's good. Oh, okay, perfect. Okay, and next question. What about the NA duplex data gathering diagnostic? Is this part of the topology or diagram pruning? The data from the task along with the topology gathering dialog is used to build diagrams. Okay, perfect, yeah. So. That's, it falls into two, basically. What happens is when you do that particular diagnostic task, it does the diagnostic information. It gathers that, okay, I did this diagnostic, and I, uh, it has a record when it started the diagnostic and what information it collected. At the same time, since topology gathering is also part of that, the topology information is also populated. So it, it does both. But the rules are different for a diagnostic data, and the rules are different from the topology data. So the pr both pruners are kicking in for that. Uh, next question, Wendy. And that's all we have right now. Thank you. Oh, perfect. Uh, Stephanie, are we good to continue? You are good to continue. Thank you. Okay, going forward, three points to note. So the very important thing is we should make sure that the pruner is scheduled and running. That's very important. But the thing is, we have seen, right, and it does gather a lot of information. It does generate a lot of temporary housekeeping information also because of the nature of the job it is doing. So if the pruner is not running, we may run into a couple of very nasty problems. Uh, we could be running out of the disk because there are lots of logs that got generated in the local disk. But sometimes there could be database alarm saying that their database is full and sometimes uh, the engine itself could become slow because uh, the database has become too heavy, too bulky, and uh, that all the such queries, all the reporting queries, all the tasks are getting slow because the database has become too huge. So it's very, very, very important. I, I can't stress more on that, how important is the pruner. 
because it looks like a little neglected task uh, because it is just doing its system administration. But the thing is, this is a very important task. We need to clean the stuff which we collected and we we are done with using that data. So we do need to run the pronoun. And if there is any reason why you want to stop Pruna, I think you should engage the HP, HP support and understand the use case. And you should talk to them before even stopping it. Um, yeah. And then next thing is, if you're not running Pruna right now, and after this session, let's say I hope I convinced you that to run the Pruna and you start running the Pruna, I uh, just want to make sure that the Pruna is done. So initially you want to run the Pruna a little aggressive. Uh, by default, as we talked, it would be once a weekly. But again, that's the default configuration. It depends upon your environment. For example, if you're doing a lot of snapshot tasks, like almost every day you're doing a couple of thousands, so probably you want to run your Pruna a little aggressive. Uh, instead of just one week, you want to run a couple of days per week, twice a week or thrice a week. Um, there is no problem with that. And just to make sure that your pruner is catching up, you want to check the additional information section in the task page. You want to see, for example, it should look something like this. The deleted zero rows or 20 rows. So basically it is showing that very few data is deleted. That means it is up to date, almost up to date. So you, this is a very good result of a pruner. You want to make sure that it is in this state. If the pruner says that it is timing out, but the task is getting interrupted, that means you have lots of data and pruner is not able to complete within the default time, which is one hour. So you can do a couple of things. I didn't mention that in the slide here, but you can do a couple of things. So if you think that your pruner is not catching up and you want to make it current, you can increase the max task length temporarily and make it two or three hours and make sure that the pruner has completed. In spite of that, even if the pruner is not able to catch up, please engage the HP and uh, get some additional guidance how to make sure that it's up to date. Once it's up to date, make sure that pruner is, uh, is scheduled weekly or twice a week, it depends upon your environment. And make sure that the additional information is looking something like this in this example. Okay, deleted zero rows, that means it's up to the date. And if you have any additional requirements, uh, you should talk to the HP before doing any further on the pruner. And we should run the pruner on all cores. We talked about this. Uh, the reason is pruner not only prunes the database, it also prunes the local server logs. So you need to run on all cores. If you are running in the multiple cores, try to make sure that it's not a overlap because it doesn't create any problem. Even if it both run at the same time, it doesn't create any problem. But we want to optimize it. Let's say Pronar and Core 1 is running on every Tuesday and Wednesdays, or uh, every Tuesday and Thursday, midnight. Pronar and the Core 2 is running on Wednesday and Friday. So that's, that's a nice way to configure it. Uh, but even if they're running at the same time, there are no issues. We are taking care that it doesn't get into trouble. Few more points to note. Okay, so a few other things to understand. Um, so a couple of databases, especially the Oracle, they have a concept for redo logs. So if you're trying to delete a lot of data, that means you're running Pruna for the first time or after a long time you start running, uh, there's a chance that your redo logs may fill up. You know what happens if the redo logs are done, right? In one configuration, once the redo logs are done, Oracle automatically locks itself, so any one then you won't even run and no query, all queries will fail. So you, you don't want to get into that state. So when you are trying to uh, delete a lot of data, or you think that you didn't run for Pruna for a long time, so you want to make sure that you are taking care of the read, read logs. Just keep an eye on that. The next one uh, is the Pruna deletes the data. Why? So we don't truncate the tables because apparently it's just not possible because there's so many rules. So we can't truncate the table. So we delete the data. So what does that mean? The database gets fragmented. So it's a good idea to engage the DBS once a while, once a quarter, to look into how your um, indexes are looking at, or just do a plain re-index of your data, of all the tables. Uh, that would be a good practice. 
uh, to check the health of your database once a while. Like how much fragmentation it happened, is the index search looking healthy? So that's a good database practice. Uh, right now we advise you to work with your DBS on this particular one. Um, that will be, yeah, so it's some kind of a regular maintenance. Reclaiming space. So if we do a large scale pruning, that means you didn't run for the pruner or you migrated from the old version. You remember this pruner was different in the old version, like 7.6 or 7.x. So now you've moved to the latest version. So you need to delete a lot of stuff because the pruner will take care of deleting all the old unwanted data. Um, after this pruner run is completed, you know, right, uh, the way this databases work, even though they delete the data, so they won't use that space back to the database or the system. So the database, you need to re reclaim the space. Some, I think some technical word, I'm not a DBA expert, but the technical term is uh, you want to come not compress. So what was that? So basically, you are trying to reclaim the empty slots that are available. So you want to compact. I think compact is the word. You want to compact the database. So again, you need to engage your DBA. And that's the best way because he he knows the database. The, the reason we are not providing any. The reason that NA is not doing that work is because. It depends purely on the database configurations. It could be many ways the database could have been configured. And again, it depends upon the company DBA rules also. So we are not getting into that. So it's a very good idea to engage with DBA to look into this space and the defragmentation. And the next important thing is don't run any SQL statements directly on the INA database, like delete or modify. Uh, because as you know, right, the database tables have a schema, they're connected to the other tables. Uh, if we delete in one table, so even though, by the way, the rules I just said are at a very high level. There could be a lot of intricacies inside. You don't want to violate some of the relations. So whatever I mentioned in the slides is just a high level. So for example, uh, Let's say in the diagnostics, if you go to the diagnostic table, I'm sure you can figure it out what the diagnostic table is. And you do that delete based on the rule I said, we may be in problem because it's not just deleting that one. We'll try to check whether it's a valid device or what are the other rules it applies. So there are many other rules we didn't mention here, which are like getting into the, literally getting into the code part. So deleting, you directly on the database is not advisable, but you can do a couple of other deletes. So you can go to the NA UI and you can select, you can do a search for tasks and you can delete if you want to do that way. Search for tasks, once the tasks are done, you can do the action items and based on that you can delete the data. So while the query is running, okay. So you can not task. Okay, I'll go into that. The thing I was trying to show you is, uh, yeah, you can do something like this if you want to delete. Go ahead and delete. Uh, but the important thing is, don't. Uh, then any will take care of the relations, and it will take care that it does a clean job of deleting that. Uh, by the way, when you do a user delete from the UI, the retentions are not respected. Basically, you are overriding your retention intervals. You are saying, go ahead and delete everything, and I know what I'm doing. So the retentions are not respected. The retention interval is only for the pruner only for the automatic part of that. So don't run any direct delete statements on the any. So I'll pause here for the next uh, poll and uh, is there any questions from Wendy? Uh, yes, there is. Isn't the pruner task run automatically on all co cores in an HS environment? The task resides in the database, so it applies to all cores, correct? Okay, that, that's a very good question. Um, so right now, I, I don't think so it runs on all cores. You need to configure the pruner on all cores. So if you go to the pruner, by default, one pruner is uh, 
at one when you one core it is running. So you just make sure that you create a new task on each core. So you go to that any console of the each task, uh, each core, and you create in, you schedule a new pronoun. So it runs on that particular core. So the answer is no. You need to consider explicitly on each core. Yes. That is the only question we have. And, uh, and the poll results are showing. Uh, we have 58% um, for the IPv4 and IPv6 dual stack devices. We have 17% for IPv6 only devices. And 50% for no IPv6 devices. Thanks, Tiffany. Okay, the next one, what I'll do is, I'll get into the full text search. Okay, so this is the second part of today's discussion, the full text search for configurations. So even before getting into jumping into the feature, why do we need this? Uh, this is a very interesting uh, feature we introduced. Uh, why do we need this? So MNA stores all the device configurations we just talked about, right? By default, the configuration retention is uh, one year. Let's say you have a couple of thousand devices. You can imagine how much information is getting stored there. And yeah, it depends upon how many devices and how much is the configuration retention for you. And we do provide a lot of search on these configurations. And you can create the dynamic groups and the policies based on the device configurations. For example, if you go there, if you go and search for configurations, that is one place where we can search the device configurations. Um, we can do a search in the current configurations, that is the most recent configuration of a particular device. Or you can do the all configurations. So this literally means that you are searching in one year's old data. So you can imagine how how big the data could be. And by default, you know that, right? And the SQL. So obviously our databases are MySQL, Oracle, and the SQL Server. So by default, if you want to search anything in the text data, we have an SQL construct called like. Uh, it does a full table scan because literally it has to go to the all the configuration text data uh, and it has to really compare your such string. So if it's a n square job and you can imagine um, how much configuration you have. Just to get I took an example. Let's say for example you have 50 K devices, 50,000 devices. And with the average configuration size of 250 KB, I'm on the lower end actually. I have seen the configurations bigger than that. Um, then it would be just 12 GB for the current configuration. 50 K into one port of MB is around 12.5 GB. That means just to search in the most recent configuration, which is the current configuration for the device, we need to search 50, 12, 12.5 GB of data. That could be how big, even though you have a very big database server, that's going to take some time actually. Sometimes it may not even return. And the other thing you need to do is, when it is doing a search, if you are running other snapshot tasks, that means the data is getting updated, then the, this search query will be errored out. It will say that the data snapshot has changed, so your query is no more valid because there is a new data. So we'll get into a couple of uh, interesting problems uh, because you have huge configuration data. And this example, which is just an average example, and imagine, about running the same query on when you select search all configurations. That is, you are searching on all the last 365 days of data. That would be a couple of GBs. And I have seen that it's going to 100 GB also for the whole configuration. So it's very difficult to do a SQL-like search on the configurations. And the configurations is one which we keep using a lot because we want to know how particular config parameter got changed over the period. So obviously we do need to solve this problem, but how do we solve this? So we start taking advantage of uh, the full text features. It has been really 
uh, the databases have started supporting this one after this Google search explosion that happened a couple of years, last decade. Uh, so now the databases themselves are supporting this full text search. So yeah, Skill Server has a, a service called Full Text Service, um, which needs to be enabled for this, by the way. And Oracle, they call this one as Oracle Text module. So this needs to be installed and enabled. So when we introduce this, right, obviously our search terms are going to reduce drastically because the way the full text, uh, just to give a very quick idea on how it works, uh, we have seen that like it goes to the 12 GB and it does the string comparison on the 12 GB of data. But the full text, instead of doing that comparison before, what it does is it generates, it works on the data on the 12 GB in this example and it creates the index, full text index in a separate place. Uh, when you do a search query, instead of looking into the 12 GB of data, it works on the full text index which it created. So it will be much faster. And we have dynamic groups based on the configuration. These will be recalculated much faster. If you are doing on the regular one, it's going to take a long time, so better use the full text search. We'll try to discuss uh, the differences between these two. Uh, we'll talk about that going further. So even before getting into how we enable this, uh, let's, let me just make sure I cover this. So we did talk about enabling the service, right? Okay. Now let's get into how do you enable the full text search. In this example, in this discussion, I'm just referring to 920, but this feature is available on Mino with the latest patch and 910 with the latest patch. Uh, actually, it's available on 910 patch to itself, yeah. Uh, but for this discussion, I'm going to use the 920 commands. And uh, if you go to the respective admin guides, uh, there's a nice uh, chapter that talks about this and just gives all the details on how to configure it and how to deal with errors. So to quickly get into the enabling part, the best way to do is get into the NFTLI and run the first thing is you want to run is full text search option analyze. The idea here is when you do the analyze option, it tries to check whether your database has the full text capability. For example, did you install the service? Is the service running? Um, how big is your current configuration? So it gives some kind of, uh, it just goes and checks whether you have everything set to enable the full text search. So it's very important even before enabling the full text search, you better go and analyze it. Uh, that's very important. And this is, again, the CLI option which I'm saying is for 920, they are respect to equal ends in 901, 910. Once you analyze it, you'll find out if everything is good. Once everything is good and you have a good understanding of what's going to happen and how much time it's going to take, then you go and say enable run the full text search with enable option. When you do this, this is a little interesting because we are relying on the database support of the full text search. On Oracle, it's a blocking call, so it blocks. So it's going to take some time, but how much time it's going to take? You'll get a rough idea in the analyze. So analyze is just to we exactly don't know how much time it's going to take because it depends upon the system resources, it depends upon the database. But what Oracle does say is that it uses some simple way to calculate, approximate. So when you run analyze on a Oracle, on an NA running on Oracle, it will say, okay, you have the service or modules installed and you have so much data, so much configuration and it may take a couple of hours to do that a couple of minutes to do that. So you get an idea how much time it's going to do. But remember, this is a one-time thing. You don't want to do it again. So the first time to enable the full text, I have to be honest, it's going to take some time. So you plan your CR, change your course in such a way that uh, you understand how much time it's going to take. And the other thing is I'm referring to Oracle and SQL Server, and this feature is not on MySQL. We'll talk about that later. Uh, so on Oracle, what it, you do is you go to the, the NACLI, you do the analyze, and then 
you will get an idea how much time it is going to take. So go ahead and plan your CR based on that. Then you start enabling it. And what actually there is another interesting feature with support is the parallel threads. I'm sure your database is on multi-core box. These days nobody runs on a single core anyway. So you check how many cores your database server has. Let's say it has 10 cores. Don't do the 10 here, just do 9. So it uses the 9 threads to create the index. That would be much, much faster. And SQL Server, we don't have this parallel option. You can just ignore the parallel option because SQL Server inherently takes care of it. You don't need to mention it. Uh, so there are small differences between the databases. The reason is this implementation is not a standard. It depends upon each database how they implement it. And when this enabling is going on, so you want to make sure that it's going on or something happened or it's completed. So you want to go open another NACLI and run the option status. That will print what is the current status of it. You can always go to the database and look into that. Uh, but the simple way is uh, from the CLI itself, open another CLI and check the status. So what I gave is a very quick overview of this. There are a lot of details and integrations, and you want to look into the admin guide for the complete details. Like for example, if I get into error, how to deal with that? Admin guide provides all that information. And I'm not really touching the old version commands, but again, those are available in the admin guide. So to summarize this, I didn't capture the whole stuff in the slide, but to summarize this, you first need to understand your database, which is SQL Server or Oracle, has full text search enabled the database feature is enabled. If not, you want to work with your DBAs, make sure that that is available. Then the second thing you want to show is you go ahead and run the analyze. This will again double check whether you have that all the required information. On Oracle, it provides how much time approximates, how much time it's going to take to run, and how much data you have. On SQL Server, it will just check whether that particular service is available or not and make sure that all the other privileges are available. Once you do these two parts, based on the information you have, you go ahead and plan your CR, then go ahead and enable the full text search. And if you are on Oracle, try to exploit the multi cores that are available on the database server. And once you, you enable this, for feature thing, right? Enya takes care of keeping this index up to date. Up to date, so you don't need to worry about it. Enya will take care that if a new record is getting added to the configurations, it will make sure that the full text have, uh, index is updated with that information. So Enya takes care of it. So first time, it is little time taking because you are trying to crunch a huge data. It's not like a normal index. If you see the normal database index, right? Uh, just create an index, it's simple, it's just done. Uh, but this index is different. This index is a full text index. That means you are taking the data and you are crunching the data before the search happens. So it's like Google indexing the data. So you are doing it one time. So the first time is time taking, so you plan your CR based on that. So I'll pause here for questions. I'm just wondering if there are any questions in this particular area. We do not have any questions for this area. Perfect. Thanks, Randy. So how do you use this feature? Again, it's pretty, once you enable this, you go for search for configuration. And in the configuration text criteria, so this one is not enabled. So I'll go to the other one, which is enabled. Okay, by the way, if it's not enabled, it will show only two criteria, that is contains and doesn't contain. If the full text search is enabled, which is my another NA box, search for configuration, it will show two additional criteria, which is a contained full text, does not contain full text. So you select this and search for, let's say, SNMP. Okay, so this one is okay. NMP. So it's pretty quick, you have seen that, right? It just, I don't know how much data this has, but it is pretty quick. 
So besides this, you can do the same search from the search for devices. Again, you have the configuration search here. Um, all the way down. So you can see that again, the new full text criteria. Besides this, when you create a dynamic group, let's say groups, new group, and if you are using a dynamic group, and you select the criteria as configuration text. Again, it, it could have multiple criteria. Again, you can choose full text search and you can put it. Uh, if you're using dynamic groups, I rather advise to do full text because the contents may take a long time. So we talked about these two. So you can use this feature using the search and dynamic groups. And the same thing will appear in the policy scope also, dynamic policy scope. Again, this is a question I keep getting. So, okay, this is good. We introduced a new criteria, a new full text search, which is quicker and faster. And we have the old one. Why did we keep both? Why didn't we override one with the other? For a simple reason that both are addressing two different problems. So, contains is very powerful in terms of patterns because it is doing literally a character by character comparison and searching. So you can imagine uh, how many patterns you can do. It's almost all, not almost, it's all the patterns that are supported by SQL like, like we support that. Uh, you can do uh, some kind of regular expressions, you can put some wildcards, star, um, brackets, uh, you want to put the range one to nine in enclosed brackets, you can do a lot of stuff uh, with the like such pattern. So the patterns are very powerful here. But the downside of it is a classical computer science problem, right? We have more accuracy, but it's slow because of the accuracy. Uh, search time tends to increase with the number. If you have more device configurations, obviously your search time is going to increase. So sometimes when you do a search, right, let's say you have a pattern, you, you have very rich pattern, and you want to do a search based on that. Then what I'll do is, okay, fine, I'll use the contents. But I don't want to, I'll put some limitations. I want to put some additional filters. Let's say, okay, data from the last one hour ago, one hour ago till now. So I want to be very specific and very isolate my area. And I'll say, uh, the host name contains Cisco, something like that. So, but if you are trying to search for the whole thing, I'll go for the full text search because it's faster. And again, if any installation is a small one, it's a couple of hundred nodes or a couple of thousands which, which has very less configuration retention, then probably I won't even worry about the full text search because the contents will work fine. It will take a couple of seconds, a couple of minutes sometimes. So that is it. So it has a very rich pattern support, but the search time increases classic computer science problem. So again, with the full text search, patterns are limited, obviously, because the full text is not really working on the complete configuration data. It is working on the pre-canned index, the full text index. So you can't have many patterns here. In fact, the patterns are very restricted with the full text search, but it is quicker. So you have more flexibility, but it's slow. You have less flexibility, but it's much, much, much faster. We are talking in terms of uh, for example, in the 12 GB, I'm sure the contents will take a couple of minutes. Sometimes it may take even more than that. Whereas full text, it will take a few seconds, a couple of seconds. Uh, not more than 10 IEU. Yeah. So that's the difference. That's the reason we left both. It depends upon your use case, how you want to use it. Uh, I'll pause for a second for the next poll question. Stephanie, While we're please. doing the poll question, let's go to questions in the panel. Uh, do we have to stop in a server during pruning index creation? Full text search. Uh, um, so pruning or full text. So okay, let me paraphrase this question. So it looks like the question is, do we need to stop NA when we create the full text search or full text index, right? I think so. Yeah, pruner, I don't know why pruner is here. Um, okay, just to address, if it's a pruner, pruner, 
will run if any is running. So pruner, for pruner, any has to run. So that is clear. Now for a full text search, you remember, right, the way we said is you can enable using any CLI. If it is any CLI needs to run, obviously your NA needs to run. So while enabling full text search, we enable NA. But, but the thing is, sometimes it's nice to call out the outage uh, or create a CR so that nobody is accessing NA uh, because your database will be very intensive during that time. Uh, so because it's trying to crunch huge data. And it depends upon how much data you have. Let's say you have large data, it's better that you take an outage or a CR and create the full text search. So, but since we are using any CLI to answer your question, yeah, any needs to be running. Uh, next question, please, Vani. The next question, hold on, let me just send this one out. All right, next question. Estimate size of the full text index. Early estimates were not accurate. Has the calculation improved? Um, I understand right, the question. So again, as we said, right, when we do the estimation, we assume that we are working on a single core, and we try to be very conservative. So my understanding is when you say early estimates were not accurate, uh, if you are referring to time, we are not conservative with the time. Generally, the time seems to be more, and the time is calculated based on single core. Suppose if the time shows up as 10 hours and you are in a database where you have 16 cores, so obviously we are going to allocate 15 cores to that. I'll do a simple divide by because let's say your estimate is 10, 10 by 15 is around less than an hour. So the estimates are calculated based on a single thread because we don't know how many cores the database has. And we try to be very conservative. So the goal of this estimate is just to give a ballpark. It's not to exactly point that, okay, your CR has to be this much. It's just to give an idea because initially the challenge we had when we were trying to prototype this one was a uh, uh, so couple of people, including me, when I started getting into this whole uh, full text search thing, I thought this is like a regular index, like a normal index, and it will be a quick immediate. Uh, but it's not the case because we are trying to crunch the data and crunching even the Oracle and SQL server, they don't provide any data how much time it's going to take just because it depends upon the data. Let's say your data is a very clean English file. You know that Shannon's compression theorem and all those things, right? If it's a clean English data, it's much easily compressed. But if, if, if you see the NIC configuration side, some configurations are very near to the English language where some are having a lot of numbers. Um, so it depends upon the data and the compression or the indexing depends upon the, the way the data is organized. So Oracle and SQL Server, they don't provide any exact estimates because it's just not possible for them also because it depends on the data. So what we try to do is we try to extrapolate based on the information which the databases have provided and we try to be conservative. And the way we calculate is we think that we assume that it's a single thread. So suppose you are using multi-thread, I would say divide that estimate by the number of cores you are putting there. Uh, yeah. Evan, next question. I hope that answered the question, yeah. Are there any disadvantages to enabling full text search? Why would we not enable this? Um, you should enable this. So if you see, uh, the reason you don't want to enable this is if you don't need it. If your NA is a very small one, you don't have much configurations, then also probably you want to go with that because it's much faster. Uh, so I don't see any reasons why we can't enable it. Uh, you should enable it. Uh, uh, all the NA installation should enable it. But the thing is, you can't enable by default because we introduced this in the patch. And with the 920 also, if you want to enable this, first we have to crunch the data. And you don't want to enable this as part of the installation because the installation is going to take a couple of hours. You don't want to spoil the installation experience. So after thinking all these things, we just give this option to the user so that they can enable by calling an outage or a CR. 
So I'd rather I'd recommend to enable these options on all NES. Yeah. Can we use SQL like search reg like for any field using contains? Uh, Wendy, could you repeat the question for me? Sorry. Yeah. Can we use SQL like searches, um, regex like, for any field using contains? Oh, it's, uh, oh, okay. So the question is not about full text, it's for the contents. So for contents, simple rule is any patterns that are supported by SQL like. SQL like is a standard the standard one that works almost, 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 it's similar in both SQL Server and Oracle. So any patterns that are supposed to work with SQL-like will work with the contents. So you should refer to the SQL-like uh, examples and the documentation. So it's exactly the same thing. Great, thank you. Next question. Does the pruner run against data stored in the database? Why would uh, why would need to configure it on each core? Why would you need to configure it on each core? Yeah, so as we touched on that, on a HS, I think um, this particular gentleman is referring to the HS. So yeah, HS has multi-cores and all work on the single database. Definitely running a pruner on one core will take care of the database. But you remember there are some temporary files that get created on each NES server also that may be hogging a lot of space, a lot of disk space, a lot of lo local disk space. So you want to clean that stuff. So in the pruner we don't have a configuration that says clean only database or clean only disk. So it is advisable with the current pruner to run on all the cores because it is taking care of the local disk files also. Next question, please. That is all the questions we have at this time. Oh, perfect. So I'll wait for the Stephanie to give a go ahead. OK, I'm closing the results here. You go ahead. Oh, thanks, Stephanie. Oh, OK, I don't have much. Um, actually, that's what it is. Um, Uh, Wendy, Stephanie, uh, I don't have anything. Uh, okay, great. There's two Thank more you. polls to Ram. Oh, please post those. Okay. Here comes the fourth one. Yeah. And it's up and go ahead and vote. The answers are still coming in. And the question is, do you use HP Live Network Connector? Well, what are the questions? Oh, okay. um, yes. Do you use it? Yes. OK. Um, I think it's all right. I think we're done. I'm going to close it and post it. Share. All right. Here you go. Let everybody see the results of that. OK, and uh, I'll uh, run the final poll. Okay. OK, final poll is up. Which external authentication components do you use? Select all that apply. And while we're waiting for that, we have one more question. Sure. Where we can download the presentation from all these three sessions. Um, Stephanie will be sending out the links to those, and you will be able to get the information on our Vivid SIG um, once the information is posted. It takes a few days for that to happen. But we will get that out there very soon. OK. And that's the end of the questions? Yep, I'll close it and post it. Here we come. All right, here's the results. Great, thank you very really much. Interesting. Great, OK, thanks I would, everyone. I would like to thank everyone for joining our um, NA SIG session. 
Um, please let us know if there's any other sessions you'd like us to have. And thank you, and have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you.